If you've ever gone on Facebook Marketplace looking for furniture to flip, I bet you've come across one of these orange 90s tables. It's not real wood. The drawer is not even real. It doesn't open. Since it's small and sort of neutral in style, I think this would make a great beginner's piece. I usually see these up for sale for around $10 or $20, and I think that's a pretty good price. Let's flip it. I always start my makeovers by cleaning my piece. It's so important to properly clean your piece before painting. I'm using Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner. If your piece isn't clean, your paint's not going to stick to it. And when you're done with your cleaner, rinse with a wet rag because you want to get the cleaner residue off. And the next step is to get the hardware off. It's just a fake pull, so there's really no reason for it. I'm gonna fill in the holes. I'm not gonna replace it with anything. Since there's no drawer, it doesn't need it. I'm using Daps wood filler. You can use Elmer's wood filler, Dixie Belle mud. You can use any sort of wood filler, really. Now when it's dry, I go back with my sanding block and I wanna sand it smooth. Sometimes your wood filler shrinks, so in that case, you would just go back and add a little bit more wood filler, wait for it to dry, and sand again. I'm using Dixie Belle paint in the color Drop Cloth. This is sort of a creamy, it's a much warmer white. I'm gonna use this color for the entire base and I'm going to use my Zebra Round Brush for this because it's great for spindles. I'm usually really big on priming. I prime almost every piece, but this one, there is 100% no reason to prime. It's not real wood, so I don't have to worry about bleed through. There's no odors because it was kept really clean and nice. And I don't have to worry about adhesion issues. It's not like really glossy or anything like that. So this is just an easy makeover. I can just put two or three coats of paint on it and finish with a sealer. I notice a lot when I do the round parts of a spindle, I sort of do this like light slapping motion on it and then the longer parts, I'll just do long strokes. When I was painting over the wood filler where I filled the holes, I noticed it's a little bit raised, so I just need to go back in with my sanding block and sand a little bit more. I don't want you to be able to see any wood filler around it. I don't want it to be raised. I want it to be flushed, but I also don't want it to be inverted. So when you're sanding the holes for poles, it could be a little tricky. You just have to keep going back to it and make sure it's where you like it. I want to show you up close how I do my second coat. I'm going to spray lightly with my water mister and then I'm really going to let the brush do most of the work. Um, there's no brush strokes on this. It's really good coverage. So I'm only going to have to do about two coats and then a third coat is always just touch ups. I kind of go around my piece and I see if I've missed a spot, you know, and that'll be my third touch up coat. So now while I have it flipped upside down and I haven't even started the top yet, I'm going to seal this bottom. I'm going to use Barathane's water-based polyurethane and the reason I put it on a paper plate or you can put it in a Tupperware or something is because I don't want to contaminate this whole entire jug. 
There's so many times where if I dip my brush in it after I've been painting with a certain color, um, the color will go into my can. And then for my next project, it'll have a little tint to it. So for that reason, I'm gonna put it on a paper plate. I love this brush so much when I was painting with the chalk paint, so I'm also gonna use it for my sealer. When you're sealing smaller sections like spindles or drawer fronts, it's much easier than when you're doing an entire tabletop. That's when it gets really hard with streaks and stuff. But when you're doing these small sections, you can see much more where you're covering it, and I think it goes on much easier. As you can see, my leg here is a little wobbly, but I just need to tighten the screw, so that's an easy fix. I want to say about sealing, whatever you don't cover in your first coat of sealer, don't keep working the sealer. Just leave it alone and come back. You'll cover it in your second coat because if you overwork it, it starts to get dry and then it does what we call dragging and then you can see streaks. That's pretty much where streaks come from. Sometimes just to avoid streaks, I will do like three coats just to make sure that I've covered everything. I love a satin finish when I'm using my sealer. It just makes everything a lot easier to clean, especially when it's on white. And if you use a matte finish, you still have that chalky feeling. I love chalk paint because of the way that the adhesion properties, but I don't like it when it's matte. <laughs> so I always add my silky um, satin finish. So I flip my table over and now I'm just doing a light scuff sanding over the edges and the top. I have this mud puddle sitting in my cabinet, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that for the top as the base coat. My goal for painting this top is to have a brush stroke free finish. The only way I'm gonna eliminate brush strokes is by using my water mister. So I water mist my brush and then my piece also. And that really helps to sort of dilute the paint and let it glide on so nice. It makes it so much easier for me to move the paint around when there's a little bit of water on my piece. You don't wanna soak it. You just wanna sort of mist it with the water mister. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them at um, Sally's Beauty Supply Store. You can even use an old Febreze bottle. Actually, that's what mine is right there. It's, um, yeah, they have like those misting for breezes. So when we finished using it in the house, I just cleaned it out. And I, for a little while, my pieces smelled like Febreze, but it was nice and pleasant. So um, now it doesn't smell anymore. The smell is gone. I got pretty good coverage with my first coat, but I am gonna go in anyway with a second coat. I'm much more careful when I apply my second coat because that's the coat that everyone's gonna see rather than my first coat. Your base coat is sort of just laying on paint, but your second coat is what everyone's gonna see, so you wanna be careful. I sort of, I just go in the same direction. I make sure that I have everything covered, especially on my edges there. But when I'm, I'm gonna do long strokes across the piece in the same direction for my, um, the top of it. Now I'm gonna add a wash to this piece and I'm using Rust-Oleum's chalked and white linen. So for this video, I'm going to make my wash really, really, really watered down. I'm gonna add a little bit of paint, as you can see, and then we're gonna add probably three times the water because you can always add another wash, another layer or two, but you can't take it off. So once it's on there, if it's too light, you know, you can't just take it off and go back to dark. You'd actually have to paint over it. So the safe way is to just do a really watered down one and then keep adding to your liking.
Now I'm just gonna apply my wash in sections and then I'm gonna remove it with a microfiber cloth. I love to use those cloths, they're my favorite because they just give you such a smooth finish. Now when I'm using my cloth to wipe it back, I wanna make sure that I'm doing it where there's no folds. If there's folds, if it's all scrunched up your towel, then you'll have a really scrunched up look. But if you're doing it on a smooth, the smooth side of the towel or rag, then it will come up smooth. And I'm looking for a smooth look. I do a lot of washes on my channel, I've noticed, because it just really gives the piece that extra depth. You know, it kind of takes the boring factor out and gives it the wow factor. It's an easy technique to give extra added interest in your piece. So as you can see here, my towel was a little scrunched up, so I needed to flatten it back out, and then I go back and now we have a nice smooth finish again. And now for the edges, I never add paint. I just use what's already on my rag. As you can see, there's paint on there. So we're just gonna use the drips and whatever's on my rag and just go across like that. And it's, it sort of paints it with the rag. Now I had a drip right there, so I'm just gonna go across and I'm gonna start there for my second coat. One tip I will give is when you're doing a wash, if you're doing more than one coat, it's a really good idea to have more than one rag for wiping because once it gets full of paint, it's a little bit harder to remove the paint. It starts to lay the paint on. So I should have had another rag with me and I didn't and I always um, run into that problem at the end. So two rags is always a really good idea. So now I like this, it's okay, but it's not great. We have our dark and an extremely light, but I kind of want to add that middle color in again. So now I'm going to go in with my drop cloth. I'm going to add a final wash and this one's going to be thicker I'm because I just want to do one for this one. And I'm going to have three variations of color in here. I'm only working over my table so that you guys can see it in the shot for the video camera, but it's not a good idea to be mixing over the table because you know you could definitely get drips. But because I'm doing a wash, it doesn't really matter. I know I'm gonna wipe it back anyway. So you can see the difference between the thicker wash and the thinner wash.
And the great thing about a wash is it's so forgiving. If you mess up or you don't like a section, you just go back over it with your paintbrush and you can just wipe it back down again. Another option would have been to paint the top in the drop cloth and then go back and did a mud puddle wash with maybe some of that white linen. So you can do a lot of different things, but I usually do my dark color in my base and then I do a light and a medium on the top. Now I'm sealing the top with my Verithane's water-based polyurethane again in satin. After doing a wash, I always feel like my color is just a little bit dull. And then I add my satin to it and it just brings it to life. So when I'm sealing this, I'm just going back and forth in long strokes from one side of the table to the other and I'm not even worrying about my drips because I will scoop those up at the end. And you want to be careful if there's any hair or lint or anything like that. I have dogs so there's usually a piece of dog hair that I have to always be careful of. Once if you seal it with a piece of like dog hair or something, you're sealing that into your piece. So you wanna be really careful that you have a really clean surface before you seal. And here's how I'm gonna smooth out the drips on the side. I'm just gonna lay my brush over to the side and just sweep it right across. Now here I'm adding my second coat of sealer and it goes on so nice and smooth because I've already got my first coat on. When you're putting your first coat on, it's, it's a little bit harder because your surface is chalky and matte so it doesn't go on nice and smooth. Your second coat will go on kind of like soft and buttery because it already has that satin finish on it. And here we are. I love the basic wash technique. I think it's really great and I use it all the time still. So if you can get this down, you can really do a lot with your pieces. I hope you enjoyed this beginner video. If you did, hit the like and subscribe button and I will see you next week.